Okay, so here's a new reading vlog. Obviously, if you clicked on this video, you already know that it's a reading vlog. <laughs> So today is the 7th of April. I only know that because we have two more days until Fearless. I swear, time doesn't matter to me anymore. Life is just measured in Taylor Swift announcements and album releases and song releases. Like today we got Mr. Perfectly Fine and I'm really enjoying listening to that song. It's definitely gonna take me a little while to get used to it and to like have it really grow on me, but for the most part, I'm actually enjoying the song. Okay, so this vlog is dedicated to the Read Fat Positive readathon that Reverie with Ali is putting on. And I'm so excited that she decided to do this and she put it all together because I've been wanting to participate in a readathon that focuses specifically on fat representation for so long. I am not good at putting together these kind of things, so I would have never done it, but I'm really glad that Allie did it so I can just participate in it and have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so here are all the books that I am planning on reading, right? Is this all of them? This feels like a lot. Oh yeah, because I added one to the list. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you wouldn't know that I got the sweetest, most kindest message from the one and only Becky Albertalli. And she ended up sending me a copy of The Upside of Unrequited. She actually also sent me another copy of it, but it's all the way over there. I don't want to go get it. Um, so I'm thinking that I might end up rereading this book because this was one of the first books as a teenager as, or wasn't it? I can't remember if I was a teenager or an adult when I read this book. I might have been an adult, but it was one of the first books with fat representation that I ever read. The first one really was Fairest by Gail Carson Levine. But this was like, this was it. This was like the book and I loved it so much. This like represented me as a person, my personality, who I am so well. I relate so much to Molly. Just, I relate to everything about this book. You know, even the title, The Upside of Unrequited. Like, I feel like my entire life has just been like so many unrequited crushes. And I could totally relate to Molly. I have a really great review up on Goodreads and even like my really old blog that I don't use anymore. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to check that out, I'll leave that link down below. So I'm thinking of possibly rereading this book. And then of course I have the other five books that I was planning on reading as well. So I think we're going to start off with The Wish Granter by CJ Redwine because I was able to find the audiobook on Hoopla. So that was definitely really helpful. I definitely want to listen to the audiobook while I read along. So we'll definitely do that. And then when I'm done, I don't know which one I'm going to start off with then. I'm thinking I might just go down the list. I might just start with Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade because I really want to read this book. I really want to get it done. And I feel like I've been missing out for so long. So I definitely need to read this one. All right. So I feel like that was everything that I need to talk about that ended up being a longer clip than I would like. I might re-record re this. <laughs> So yeah, I feel like that's all the updates that I have to give and I will see you all in my next clip Okay, so I'm not sure where I left off on my last clip because it's been a couple of days But I think I was reading the wish granter and I got maybe like two chapters into it and it just kind of gave me weird vibes um, I didn't realize that it's a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin like a loose retelling and I'm kind of iffy on that fairy tale I don't really know how to feel about it. It just seems to have some low-key anti-Semitic vibes. So I was like, mm, I don't know how to feel about this story, especially since it's a retelling. Um, so yeah, not really sure how to feel about that one. So I'm kind of leaving it off to the side for now. Also, I can't decide how I want my hair today. It's, it's bugging me right now. I did just take a shower, wash my hair, and I blow dried it. So it's looking good, it feels good. It just, I don't know if I'm liking my hair pulled back like this right now. I don't know. It just, it feels a little weird. Anyway, I decided to instead start reading Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. And I am currently 206, no, 212 pages into it. I'm using my The Upside of Unrequited um, bookmark. And I am loving this so much. Oh my gosh. I knew I would love it because so many of my favorite people love this book. 
and have been raving about it forever and I was like I need to jump on this train and find out what all the hype is about and I'm genuinely really impressed by this book. It's been a while since I read a romance that like I genuinely really enjoy so it's been really nice to read this one and like I said I think somewhere either at the top of this video or in my TBR that I've been really wanting to read more books that like revolve around fandom and this book is so perfect. It totally reminds me a bit of Fangirl but better and then a little bit of Geekerella as well. So like those three books all put together to combine into this adult romance. So I'm really enjoying it and the writing is fun, the characters are fun. I like that it's dual perspectives. I tend to really like dual perspectives in books, even uh, romance books. I keep wanting to say fantasy. I'm so used to reading fantasy, I keep wanting to say fantasy. I mean romance. And I'm really glad that it's told in third person as well. It's very easy to differentiate between the two perspectives. And at least the third person perspective is being put to good use, unlike some other romance books that I won't name. Um, but I feel like if you're gonna do third person perspective, you might as well have more than one perspective. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling about this book right now. Really enjoying it, highly recommend. I'm a little more than halfway through it by now. And hopefully I will be able to finish it today because I did just finish the entirety of the Superstore series TV show. And oh my gosh, that was emotional. I was like, I genuinely had pretty low expectations for A, that entire show, and B, the series finale. Like I started watching that about two weeks ago and I wasn't super invested in it and I wasn't like really into it. But I had heard some really good things about the show and that it was really funny and I'd been wanting to find like a really funny show. I love sitcoms. So I was like, you know what, we're gonna try Superstore, it's on Hulu, and I fell in love with it. Like, by the fourth season, I was already, like, super in love with it, and it's such a fun and easy show to get into and watch, and you really don't have to, like, use any brain cell to watch it, which is great. But today, I watched, like, the last three episodes, I think, and that finale just broke me and it was so satisfying. I literally cried so much. I even rewatched the first episode and cried. <laughs> it was just a really good show. I'm so glad that I ended up watching it and I totally recommend it. Um, there are some parts of the show that are like really slow and like not super interesting, but for the most part it's a pretty good sitcom. I would definitely recommend it if you like The Office or Parks and Rec or even Schitt's Creek, stuff like that. You'll really like Superstore. Also, once I finish spoiler alert, I have a couple of books that I can get to and I actually just bought this one recently on a recommendation or just kind of like a hey, this has fat rep in it and it's fantasy. And that is Ruin Song by Julia Ember. And from what I understand, this is a Phantom of the Opera retelling and the love interest is the one who is fat or plus size. I don't know if they're necessarily like described as fat, but from what I've heard and what I've seen of fan art, it seems like the love interest is the plus size one in this book. So that's gonna be super exciting to read. I am so down, I'm ready to read it, I bought it. And I think this is gonna be the one that we read next, mainly because I am dying for a fantasy book. And then the next one I wanna to get to is Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado. And then we'll get to If It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn. So these might end up being the last three books that I read for this week and we'll see how fast I can get into all of them. I just haven't been reading lately, and I think it's mainly because of Superstore, so now that Superstore's done, we can get back to reading. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to update you all on. I cleaned my room, I don't know if you can tell. I also vacuumed this room and the other room, and I made myself a coffee. We did, you know, obviously I took a shower and stuff like that. So yeah, we're having a pretty good day today, and I will check I can't tell if it's the Elote Man or if it's uh, Shave Ice. I can't tell. It could be either one, really. And I made myself a nice coffee. Life is good. We're wearing my Star Wars shirt. And I am ready to read more of Spoiler Alert. I am really loving it. And I think I'm just gonna like read the rest of this book right now. Just a quick update to say that I am on page 
270 so we have about 130 pages left we're gonna finish it tonight and I'm on my second coffee yeah this one's a bit stronger than my first one because I'm running out of milk so um, that sucks but yeah still really enjoying it we've gotten a couple of like spicy scenes and I was like thinking about it because I'm not one to typically read books that have a lot of like sex scenes in them not necessarily because I don't like reading those kind of scenes but I feel like in books specifically I don't love reading sex scenes <laughs> I grew up reading a lot of fan fiction so I feel like for some reason it's just separated in my brain where it's like sex scenes are for fan fiction and then regular books are for other stuff just not not like spicy sex scenes <laughs> and not that I like hate reading them in books like it's not a big deal like they're fine it doesn't really do anything for me but it's fine I like I can just kind of like skim over it but if I'm being genuinely honest I would much rather read like spice in the like fan fiction that I've written or like the role play that I've done on Tumblr. Like I would much rather read that <laughs> with characters that like I have written and c created and cared about for like years compared to like book characters. Like I don't know for some reason just like I don't really care about spiciness in books. Like that does not matter to me. It's probably the reason why I still read a lot of YA, why I still really enjoy it and it's like it hasn't gotten stale for me. So yeah that's just like what I've been thinking about while I'm reading this book. I don't know if that is relatable to literally anybody else but you know <laughs> I still, you know, do a private uh, role play on Tumblr with just literally one other person and I would much rather read that stuff <laughs> that we write compared to like actually published smut. So yeah, I don't know. Is that relatable to anybody else? Does anybody else like have that distinction in their head of like smut is for like fan fiction or role play and then you know smut in books is fine it's not like weird or anything it's just like it doesn't connect in my brain as much it might also be a demisexual thing i don't know because with my characters like i said i've known them for years i've cared about them for years and they're creations of my own so i have like a really deep connection to them whereas characters that i read in the book while i love them and care about them it's not in the same deep connection kind of way so maybe it's just a demisexual thing, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just what I've been thinking about. Those are just like the thoughts going on in my brain. But I am really enjoying this. So well written, so funny, I love the characters. And I'm really, really excited to see where it ends. <laughs> okay, so I just finished Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. And I loved it so much. I gave it a five out of five stars, literally amazing. I'm trying to prop my arm up on this Baby Yoda, but it's not working. So I don't, <laughs> so I don't know what we're really gonna do here. Okay, you can see his little ear, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I loved this book so, so much. Oh my gosh, like there's literally nothing I would really change about this book necessarily. I liked everything that happened. I liked all of the plot points. I liked all the character development and stuff like that. I also really liked all the conversations that were specifically about these characters' parents and like the trauma that they had gone through because of their parents. You know, just it was really, really fun to read and really interesting. And I legitimately cannot wait until the sequel, which is going to be about one of the side characters, Alex. I loved Alex, all of the pegging, we just, we stand. I love Alex. <laughs> but yeah, so I really enjoyed this book. It was so much fun, literally so much fun. I really enjoyed a lot of like the fandom stuff that was involved in this book and included, especially all like the fanfic, that was fun. But of course it makes me like wish that it was a real thing and that I could actually enjoy it. It's kind of the same thing with Bookish and the Beast, it's like it was a lot of fun to read and I love reading about fandom, but like fictional fandoms, like I wish they were real. Does that make sense? This was just such like an interesting fandom to be a part of, I would have loved to be a part of it. <laughs> anyway. I am done with that book, so now we're gonna get into Ruin Song 
by Julia Ember. <laughs> I'm really excited about this book. It is fantasy. It's a Phantom of the Opera retelling. And supposedly the love interest, I believe, is fat or plus size. I don't know what the descriptor is for this book, but yeah, that's all I know about it. I'm very excited. We're gonna take this dust jacket off though, because it's a little too big for the book. I don't think it was properly folded. And I really honestly don't like the cover art for that book. I'm so sorry. I don't know why, it freaks me out. Like it's just very, they're scary looking. I don't know, there's something about them. They just look like ghost children. I don't know, it's a little scary to me. Anyway, we're gonna start off with Ruin Song. I'm gonna see if it's on Hoopla. I think it is, and if the audiobook is on Hoopla, then I'll probably just read along to the audiobook. But yeah, that's the plan for tonight, and it's about like 10 30, 11 ish. So I have about like an hour or so left of like good reading hours. So yeah, I'm very excited. We're gonna get into a fantasy. I've been like dying for fantasy lately because that was a lot of romance. That was a lot of like contemporary romance. <laughs> okay, so today is Friday. I actually don't know what the date is. Hold on. It is the 16th and I am still reading Ruin Song. I actually didn't read it all yesterday. I was just having like a really bad day and very bad mental health day. It just was not good, but today I'm feeling a little bit better. I took a shower. My hair is just in two braids, all natural. My bangs are doing whatever it wants to do, and I'm just chilling out today. So I'm going to be reading some more Ruin Song. I'm currently on page 130. I left in the middle of the chapter, which is kind of annoying, but that's okay. And I'm eating my yogurt. This is coconut milk yogurt. So good very good for my stomach. <laughs> I've been like pretty sensitive to dairy for the past couple of years, but recently within this past year, it's gotten worse. Like I almost cannot even eat cheese and it's just awful. So I love having my uh, non-dairy yogurt. <laughs> and then I also just recently bought this cup from uh, Starbucks. It is so cute. Look at it. It has like all of these little like, I don't know what to call them. Like little studs almost around it. It's all black. I love it. And I'm drinking my coffee. Really good. So yeah, that's basically my plans for today. I also started reading Graceling recently, I think a couple days ago, and I am loving it so much. Oh my gosh, like I don't know why it took me so long to finally read that book but literally it's perfect. It's exactly the kind of book that I was looking for, exactly the kind of book that I would recommend to myself if I was like a different person. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like genuinely really loving it. I think it's so good. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the main character. I'm loving everything about it. So that's really good news. But yeah, that's all I have to update you all on. I cleaned my room as you can see. I just had to pick up some stuff off the floor and do my laundry. So I'm feeling a lot better compared to yesterday. Yesterday I just was not feeling good like physically and then also mentally and it was just a bad day. And today is a new day so that's fun. Oh also I feel like I didn't at all talk about this book. Um, it's a Phantom of the Opera retelling kind of. It's very very loose. Um, but to me, I actually don't know if I ever updated on this, but to me while I'm reading it, it definitely reads very middle grade, very, very young YA. Like not just typical young YA, but like really young YA. I'm like talking 13, 14. That's what it reminds me of. Um, I, <laughs> I don't typically read middle grade. It's not that I have anything against middle grade but I just don't typically read it and that's why I don't typically read YA that is centered kind of more around really really young YA. I feel like this would be great for somebody who's in middle school and that's not necessarily a mark against the book it's just it means that it's not really for me and for my taste. Right now while I'm reading it I feel like I'd give it around a three star rating. There are some really great elements and it has a lot of potential but I feel like this story would have been better told if it was for more of a mid to upper YA rather than a really low YA. It just has a really dark traumatic premise and I feel like it's done a disservice by being written as if it's talking to like a 13 year old. 
<laughs> I feel like if it was more centered towards like 15 and older, it would work so much better and it would have a bit more wiggle room within like talking about these more traumatic elements. But it's fine. It's not, a, it's not like a horrible book. I'm not hating it. It's just preventing me from like diving into this book and devouring it because I do actually have a couple of middle grade books that I recently bought. Actually not a couple. I think it might have only been one middle grade book. Oh no, two. I bought two middle grade books recently because I really like the premise of both of them. But I feel like if I go into those, I already know it's middle grade so I know what to expect. With this, I was expecting something a bit more and it's not. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but... I'm just not enjoying this the way that I expected to enjoy it. Okay, so I am currently on page 237 and I'm starting to notice some more issues I have with this book. One of them I just kind of started thinking about right now because like I said, I'm on page 237, literally I only have that much left of the book. And I'm just realizing right now that this book doesn't have a plot, like there's no plot. I, I could not tell you what the point of this book is, like what they're trying to do, what their goal is. It like things are happening in the book, things are happening, but <laughs> there's no actual plan or goal or plot, something that is like overarching that's gonna be happening within this book. There's really nothing. <laughs> and then another thing that I don't really like is that the writing is too simplistic for my taste. I really like flowery language. I really like descriptive, metaphorical writing styles. I think that's why I love Shatter Me so much. I mean, clearly I love that series and it's probably why I like a lot of the books that I like. It's because of the writing style. And this book has a very, very simplistic writing style. And then also I'm a really character driven reader and the characters in this book are very weak and they definitely aren't strong enough characters to carry a story that doesn't have a plot. So that's where a lot of the issues are coming about is like, well, if there's not gonna be strong characters then there might as well be a strong plot, but there's not a strong plot. So where do you go from here? <laughs> there's another thing. Oh, another thing is that I feel like a lot of this book is kind of like corny in a way. Um, I got really annoyed by this one part where the villain, he's like, he's described to be in his like mid 20s, so about my age, and he legitimately, like, no joke, twirls for no reason. Just a whole twirl for no reason at all. And he's the villain, and I'm supposed to take him seriously, and I'm supposed to be afraid of him, and yet he's out here just twirling. Like a bad Disney villain, like a bad one. Not one of their good ones, but like a bad one. And it's not even like part of his character. Like he's not like a really like cool, funny villain character. He just kind of sucks. And I'm like, that's not how you write a villain. Like if you're gonna have a villain be like a twirling, conniving kind of villain, you have to give him a little bit of flavor, right? Like you have to give him a little bit of flair, but if he doesn't have flair, why is he twirling? <laughs> so that's just another thing that I'm like not loving. This has become a vlog where I am just like ripping into this book and I feel super bad because this is the second sapphic fantasy book in a row that I have not liked. <laughs> like since I last updated you all, I said I was gonna rate it probably around a three star. It's way closer to a two star now, <laughs> which is so disappointing. Like I can't believe that so many of the sapphic fantasy books that I've read recently have just been like, <clears throat> so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. This kind of sucks. Um, I'm gonna try to finish it because according to the audiobook I have a little less than an hour and a half left so I should be able to finish it at around five um but we'll see if I even do finish it I'm just not liking this book I'm so sorry but now I guess I understand why it has a 3.5 overall rating on Goodreads like I typically try to stay away from books that are around 3.5 and under um, unless it's like a special 
kind of book where it's like Vasa and the Night has a pretty low Goodreads rating but I loved it because it was so weird and a lot of people hated it because it was so weird. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people probably don't like this for the same reasons that I don't like it so that's a little discouraging. <laughs> but yeah um I guess we'll see how it ends up. I don't I don't know if this is part of a series or not. I have no idea. Um, but if it is, I probably will never read the sequel. So that's how it's going. <laughs> also, this book kind of reminds me of like a knockoff of A Winter's Promise. Like it seems like it's trying to be A Winter's Promise, but it's not well written. So it can't be A Winter's Promise. <laughs> like it's not going weird enough or traumatic enough or like character driven enough to be a winter's promise because like a winter's promise doesn't really have a plot it's mainly character driven a lot of things happen in the book but it's not really like a like a solid plot if that makes sense but the writing style and the characterization is are the two things that like really carry that story and in this book it's trying to be that but it can't be that because it doesn't have the writing style and it doesn't have the characterization so yeah pretty disappointing but you know i'm gonna give it a fair shot and we're gonna try to see if i can finish this today because I'd like to move on to a different book. Thank you. Um, it's been a while. I It's actually been a couple of weeks since the Read Fat Positive Readathon. So um, I did end up finishing two books. And I think they're the only two books that I talked about in the vlog. Or I guess in this vlog. I don't know why I'm saying the vlog like it's some other video. So yeah, these are the two books that I finished for the readathon. I read Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, and I also read Ruin Song by Julia Ember, and these are on the complete opposite sides of the rating system. <laughs> here you have a five star book, and here you have a one star book. So, <laughs> so I guess my average rating for this readathon was three stars. That's great. Um, I did have a couple of other books that I wanted to read. I did start reading Fat Chance Charlie Vega, and I think I'm about 100 pages into it and I'm just not feeling contemporary at the moment. Like I cannot read a YA contemporary. So unfortunately, these are the only two books that I read for that readathon. So this book I absolutely loved. Five out of five stars. I thought it was a really, really well done romance book. So much fun. Really great. And it wasn't like too much and it wasn't too little of like the more spicy scenes I guess or just like the sex scenes in general it wasn't too much but it also wasn't too little if that makes sense I guess it just hit that sweet spot <laughs> but no I really liked this book I really liked the fat representation I liked that the usage of fat phobia wasn't like over the top but it still was like plot relevant I also really liked the chemistry between the two characters I felt like it was really realistic chemistry I just I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait for the sequel I think I'm really gonna like the sequel because it also stars a fat main character and an actor so I love that for me. <laughs> and then this book, Ruin Song by Julia Ember, gave this a one star. I didn't like it. I really hated it. I thought it was super boring. I thought the characters were boring. I thought the plot was boring. The writing style was boring. And none of it was enough to make me enjoy reading this book. Like reading this book was physically painful. It keeps getting described as lush and dark. It was neither lush nor dark. Um, the fat representation in this book was okay. Um, it wasn't really described very often and when it was it was very very vague. I also didn't love that the fat main character was the one that was constantly thinking about food didn't love that especially when it was juxtaposed by the main character who's on the cover who is very thin and is basically disgusted by food for the most part that felt a little weird um didn't love that but I wouldn't say it was necessarily problematic I don't know I would love some other opinions if you've read this book and were actively looking at the fat representation what you thought of it 
especially if you're a fat reviewer please let me know it just didn't sit right with me personally because i'm so tired of fat characters just being like characterized as thinking about food all the time being hungry talking about food constantly it's just very boring to me at this point so yeah i read two books i liked one of them didn't like the other one that's just how life goes so yeah um i would definitely recommend spoiler alert would not recommend ruin song over my dead body so yeah i hope you all enjoyed this vlog i don't know how exciting of a vlog it's going to be i guess we'll see in post-production <laughs> i love using those kind of words for talking about my videos and editing them <laughs> it just makes me feel very professional we'll see it in post <laughs> and i hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below in the comments if you have any fat representation books that you would like to recommend to me um i try to read as many of them as possible it doesn't always happen because so many of them are contemporary and i'm not a big contemporary reader i would much rather read fantasy unfortunately the fantasy that i read was bad so whatever <laughs> let me know what your favorite fat books are and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel also go ahead and follow me on instagram twitter goodreads storygraph all of the links are down below in the description and I will see you in my next video or vlog. Goodbye.